Hey guys, it is me, Perry Crystals, here with a brand new plugin tutorial showcase here today, and we're going to be doing the plugin chest commands. Now, of course, by the title of this video, you're probably going to know exactly what chest commands it is. It's a fairly popular plugin, and of course, we're going to be going over it, and it's very simple and easy to use, and I highly recommend it if you're just trying to make some small, simple, and just easy to use GUIs. So of course, if I haven't explained it already, this plugin does make um, GUIs, that's what you use this plugin for. Um, it's a lot, it's very customizable, um, we're going to go over the configuration a lot, because that's where you actually make the config files. Alright, let's get into this video. So, of course, to start things off, we're going to be, of course, examining the example menu. So as soon as you download the chess commands plugin, it's going to give you a example menu. And there's many different ways of actually opening this menu, but the main idea is actually pulling a compass from creative and using that. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this case. Guys, we have a compass and if you right click it will bring up the menu as you can see here it says you have open example menu and all of this is brought up by the chess commands and practically what all of that does it's, it's a custom menu you can change all the messages all of the items the commands everything and you might want to think about placeholders with this so if you you would want vault you wouldn't want vault anyway for any server but in particular, you would want Vault for making this GUI if you want like a shop or something, or if you want something to do with economy. Um, as you can see, economy, if you click that, it says you haven't paid $50 for this command. And if you click that, it does the same thing. Um, you can use different tags. You can say you have the correct permissions. You can see if permissions since I'm opt. I do have permission to access this menu. Um, you can do multiple commands at once, of course that was slash say with the broadcast. You can have it tell you something. Um, you can have info, like it doesn't do anything, but it's just there to show. Um, you can use different color codes, as you can see all the default Minecraft color codes exist and work and all of the other codes, for example, bold, random, underline, italics, those all work. Um, economy, you can do some placeholders, so we can use that, it tells you um, some of the server info. You can run commands as opt, so if you're opt, you can run a command. Um, if you're not opt and you have this permission, you can still run it, of course, so be sure to, of course, careful of the permission. Um, you can do stacks of items, enchantments, you can do different damage of armor. And of course you can do simple commands since that's not exactly installed on the server. Um, that's not a command. But all of that is customizable. We're going to be going over exactly how each part works in the configuration. But just to let you know, you can customize the message and you can change the item. So if you want the item to be a grass block instead of a compass, you can do that. And I actually recommend using this for like a lobby compass or any of those type of things, it works really well, and it's just lightweight and extremely simple. Okay, I'm in my text editor, and here we have the chess commands folder. This is the folder that's produced. We have a subcategory menu, which has all of the different menus you have. You can have multiple menus. If you want a new menu, you can copy and then paste that menu, and then you have a second menu, example.1, and say for example, so make sure that they have different commands and different menus or else it will not work and it will produce an error. So let's start with the config. Now you can change the default name and color code for any of the um any of the like chests commands like inside the GUI. For example, you can see the um, example menu. Um it changes to whatever colors here. Um, you can change separator, so this separator for multiple commands, you can always change that. I think that's pretty cool that the developer made it so you can change that. Um, that's going to be kind of useful if you're confused with that symbol. 
You can enable permissions, updates, console errors and colors, anti-spam, and if you want to spam or click, that's pretty much it for configuration. Um, the lang file, of course, is just like different uh, things. If you have like no money, or if you have money, or you need something, all of this you can cut um, customize and add. Act you can actually add lang files, which is kind of cool. And you can actually add like different placeholders here. Um, I suggest adding like a prefix, like your um, and a like, periodic, for example. You can have that, and then like the prefix for that. That's pretty much it. Standard lang file placeholders. Um, this is more just for reference. So if you actually use any of these, for example, if you copy in this and paste into the example that one more hero for this, it will produce an arrow here, which is kind of cool. Only the example.yml, this is probably the most important file. Um, hashtags you don't need to worry about, so all the hashtags are like tips and tricks and trying to show you exactly what it is and how it works. And this is the name, like the top header of the GUI. This is the number of rows, you can change it to the maximum of six. This is the command, so if you do slash menu in game, it will produce that menu. But you can change it to like, um, lobby selector, and that will change it to lobby selector. And we can change this to like, um, you can use color codes as well and do like lobby selector, and there you go. You can do the refresh rate, um, you can tell exactly if you open the GUI, what message if you don't want a message you can just leave it blank which is kind of cool um you can say if you want to right click or if you want to left click so if you left click an item it will also open the gui and you can also change the id and make sure that the id is the correct id or else it will not work and it will produce some errors that you don't want so moving on to the items of course um, always make sure that there are two spaces in between each um, kind of like paragraph thing, if you will. Um, to add more items, you just copy and paste that. If I did that wrong, I will do that again. There we go. Make sure you have the spaces. Um, make sure you have different names or else it will detect it as the same item. And make sure they're different X and Y positions. So X is vertical, um, starting from the top, and Y is down. Is that right? Yes, Y is horizontal. Wait, no. Y is horizontal, X is vertical. All right. So we got the ID. Again, make sure that's correct. You have the command. You can have different modules. So make sure that you read all all of these module modules and you make sure so if you have command like that it will actually be a command you can have name lore that's like the sub um, information of the item um, this you can have like IDs and then data values which kind of helps damage this helps to damage that took a while to figure out but um, enchanted sword you can have enchantments um, again that you can have amounts, that's all useful. Just more customization of the item. You can have um, permissions. And then if you do console in front of it, it basically runs the command in console without any permissions. And of course, opt does the same, but if you're opt, I completely messed that up. Okay. You can do different commands, slash tell, you can do placeholders like this. So these are placeholders. Um, if you want to use placeholders, placeholder API is the place to go. But if not, some placeholders like these will work if it's default Minecraft. And you can just use those and that's pretty cool. Um, definitely recommend checking that out if you have a chance, just trying some different placeholders. You can have an economy. So you can have price and it will give you the price of it. So you can like purchase something or you can pay something. So of course this is paying. So in this case, it's price and you would have to pay something. 
um, here it would take fifty dollars. So it would take fifty dollars if it, if you have a golden ingot. So if you have a golden ingot in your inventory, it will take that and it will give you fifty dollars as like selling. And all these are color codes, as you can see, and L and K. Go over that. Um, if you want it to close, or if you will not close, then just leave no command. But you can also leave it as that it's not mandatory whatsoever. Um, here, another command. Uh, another command. These are multiple commands. And you can separate. The separator is that semicolon right there, of course. You can do different permissions, I believe. Or is permissions? Yep, permission. And then chess commands dot something. So, what the permissions are for this plugin is chess commands dot the menu. So, it's just, for example, this is example dot YML. So, instead of example, because it has to include the YML. It'd be chess commands dot y um, chess commands dot example dot yml. That's permission. It's not that. It's dot yml. So make sure you have that, or else, of course, the permission nodes won't work. Um, you can have different NBT tags, and if you want it to close, then actually don't have a command. I kind of mess that up. If you so that is kind of necessary if you will not close then you want to keep open if you want it to close then leave the command as nothing or you can just like leave the command as like close menu which also works as well pretty much it for the plugin be sure to remember that the placeholders that are here are not the same as these these are like the plugin placeholders and this is the server placeholders but other than that that's pretty much it for the plugin I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.